We've added code to make sure our database is empty before each test, and we've tested our app's ability to add new items and save them with the backend API in place. Let's take our end-to-end -end test further by seeding the application with data and testing the application's behavior with a populated database. Let's add a second context, this time for a starting state that includes active to-dos. We'll start with a before each. In this before each, we want to load our database with active to-do records and then visit the application. Let's start by loading the data from our to-dos fixture, and this will give us back the array of to-dos contained in that JSON file. Then we can chain on an each to iterate over the to-dos. For each to-do, let's create a new to-do object called new to-do. We'll access Lodash through the Cypress object and use its merge function to take the to-do from the fixture and merge it with an object literal with a false is complete property. This will ensure that each to-do is in an active or incomplete state. Then for each new to-do, we'll use the backend API itself to create the to-do record in the database. After the data has been populated, we can visit our application with sci.visit. Let's create a small test that verifies the data we just created in the database is loaded by the app. We'll say that it should load existing data from the database, and then we'll get the to-do list, and we can insert that the list should have a length of four. Let's save the test and run it. Our test passes, and we can see in the command log that our before each issues a delete for each existing item in the database, and it also issues a series of post requests seeding the database with our modified fixture data. Back in the code, let's remove the only from our last test and create a new test to verify that our to-do deletion code works with our backend API connected. We'll start with a call to sci.server, and then we'll use sci.route to describe our API call. The endpoint for delete includes the item's ID, so we'll use a wildcard in our path so we don't need to be specific about the ID values. We'll give this an alias of delete. Now, we'll get the list of to-do elements and use an each to iterate over them. For each element, let's wrap it with a sci.wrap and then use find to get the child button with the class destroy. Since this element is hidden by CSS until the user hovers over the list item, we can't click on it without showing it or forcing Cypress to bypass its normal checks. Let's use the invoke command passing in the string show to make the delete button visible. Then we can issue a click command. The click will cause the app to make the delete request to remove the to-do, so let's wait for a delete call after each click. Once this has iterated over our entire list, there should be no more list items, so we can chain a should after the each and assert that the list items no longer exist. We can save this, and when the test runs, we'll see that our database is emptied out, items are inserted from our fixture, and then the test uses the app's UI to delete each item one by one until we're left with an empty list. Now let's test the ability to toggle to-dos between incomplete and complete states. We'll remove the only from the current test. Then we can create a new test for toggling to-dos. We'll be making put requests to save the updates and we'll wanna wait on those. So let's add sci.server. Then we can add a route for a put to the API slash to-dos endpoint using a wildcard for the ID segment in the URL. And we'll use as to create an alias called update. Now we can get our list items and we'll use an each to iterate over them, just like we did with the deletion test above. We'll wrap each element and use find to get the checkbox element using its class name, toggle. Then we'll issue a click command. The click will trigger the update to call our backend, so let's wait for the response for update before moving on. Once we get the response, we expect the completed class to be applied to the list item. The list item is no longer our subject, so we'll need to get it again to make our assertion. Let's add an alias right after the call to sci.wrap so we can easily reference our list item again. And we'll just call it item. Then we can use get with the item alias to assert that the list item has the completed class applied to it once the update has finished. If we save this and run it, we'll see our test passes and the app preview shows that each item gets toggled from incomplete to complete. We should probably also test that toggle works properly in the other direction. The actions taken to toggle an item are the same, regardless of what state we're toggling from. So whether an item is currently complete or incomplete, we'll find the checkbox within the item, click it, and wait for the API call to resolve. Let's refactor our code so we can run through all the items and toggle them a second time without a bunch of duplicate code. At the top of the test, let's define a function called click and wait. Click and wait will take an element as its argument, and we want this function to perform all the actions we have in our each except for the assertion. So let's cut that code from the each 
and move it into this function. Now, down in the each, we can call the click and wait function, passing in the element that gets passed into the each. Let's save this and verify that our refactoring hasn't broken our existing test. Everything still looks good. Now that we have this reusable function, let's verify that we can toggle complete items to show as incomplete. After our existing each, we can chain a new each. We'll get an element for each list item and pass that into click and wait again. This time, we'll assert that after the update, the completed class is no longer applied to the element. With that done, let's save this and see if everything works. Our test runs and all of our assertions pass. Now that we've worked through testing our application with both integration and full end-to-end -end tests, it would be nice to be able to run these tests headlessly so we could easily make them part of a continuous integration workflow. Cypress makes this nice and easy. Let's first remove the only from our previous test. Then we can open up our package.json file and in the script section, right after our existing Cypress script, let's add a new entry. We'll call this one Cypress colon all. And instead of Cypress open, we'll make this script Cypress space run. Let's save that. And in the terminal, let's stop the existing Cypress process. We'll leave our application running in the other tab since it's still gonna be required to run our test. We can run our new script with npm run cypress colon all. We'll see our test status output to the terminal as they run. And when the test run has completed, we have a nice summary of the run. And there's even a link to a video of our test, which was captured and stored with our project. We've added full end-to-end -end tests that use our backend API to seed our application with data based on a fixture. We've exercised multiple features of our application that perform updates, all in a reliable, repeatable, and flake-free way. We now have an application with well-tested functionality and a suite of tests that will detect issues with any future updates we make.